fish. There we go. There's a fish. That's a good one as well. I'm really looking forward to cracking on. Should we go catch some fish? Let's do it. It's all about our... I am the trout queen. I don't even know what to say. Oh my goodness. And let's go catch some more. Hi there folks, welcome back to the channel, it's Andy again and we've come out today to do some pike fishing but we've got two kind of facets to this video, two different things I wanted to do today. First of all, obviously you want to try and catch a few pike. Uh, I've come out ideally to do some jerk baiting, I really want to do some spring jerk baiting. Unfortunately, it's actually quite a lot colder than it had been in the previous days and I wonder whether that's going to be an issue. I was only going to bring one rod today but actually because it's so much colder I've bought a second rod just in case I have to throw some bigger baits or I have to get slightly deeper. The second reason we're here is quite sad actually. It's um, time to retire a reel. This Calera that I've had on my jerk baiting rod four years ago uh, and it was my first ever bait caster. I, I've never used a bait caster before that reel so it was my introduction and it was only ever supposed to be a stopgap but it kept going. I was expecting it to break, you know, throwing big baits with it. It's a small reel. It's not designed for what I've done with it, but it's dealt with it really well. I did notice uh, in the last few sessions the clutch was getting a little bit glitchy and actually in the last vlog that I made I nearly spooled myself on it so I thought well maybe I ought to go for something slightly bigger on this. So I treat myself to a new toy. Ooh. So this is the Akuma Citrix CI364LXA. So they're kind of medium to large size mid tine bait caster. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that bad boy. That, my friends, is one sexy little reel. Um, so the reason I went for the Citrix is partly because of the size. I like that kind of mid-size. I didn't want the big 400 thing. I don't want a massive reel to, to do this with because most of the time that's going to be on my 60 gram jerkbait rod. So it doesn't need to be a huge reel. I'm not going to put, put more than 60 pound line on this ever, I don't think. I also like the fact that it's a little bit lower in price than bigger reels, particularly the Akuma Komodo, which is a beautiful reel, but quite expensive. So I thought this would be a nice one. It's gonna get a load of abuse, and I'll be able to do loads of different stuff with it. I'll be throwing everything from bigger jerk baits with this right the way down. I might use stuff like Debush or um, smaller line through trans, stuff like that as well. I didn't want a massive reel, but it needed to be big enough to hold enough line for me to do the applications that I want. So this isn't going to be a full proper techie tech spec review of the Citrix. Uh, I may well save that for another video. If you'd like me to do a, a techie review, let me know. But to give you an eye, we're talking about a, a, a reel here that's got seven ball bearings, 25 pounds worth of max drag pressure, which is more than enough for anything I'll ever do with it fishing for pike. And it's got brass gearing, so it's really rugged. Should be super hard wearing. I'm looking forward to getting started with this, but the first thing I've got to do is get some line on it. Let's get cracking. Okay, so first job when you're spooling up a bait caster that isn't specifically designed to be spooled with braid is to get a little bit of duct tape, just about an inch of duct tape, just around the spool itself. And that's going to mean that once you've got your braid on there, it's going to be more resistant to slipping around the spool. That can be a real problem. So step number two there is I've just arbor knotted the end of the braid from the Calera onto the Citrix. And the reason I've done that is that I've chosen 58 pound eight strand, which is 0.32 mil to go on this reel and the reel is roughly twice that capacity, so I'm gonna to need to back it up quite a lot. So I'm gonna use the old yellow braid from the Calera as backing to make sure that I fill the spool up properly. So obviously doing this at home would be way easier, but I'm not at home, I'm out in the field. So to secure that Calera while I'm winding it, I've put it through the straps on my bag. Now the only job left is to get filling that bad boy. And once that finished, that leaves us with one totally empty Calera and one half full Citrix. So now it's time to get the braid on. So again, a bit of a field fix this one, but with no other way of doing it, we've stabbed some forceps into the ground to use as something to support the spool and I'll tension it with my hands at the real end. Well, 
I think that went pretty well. It's filled up nicely. I've left a couple of millimeters at the lip just in case it bulks out a little bit when it gets wet. There was probably about seven or eight meters left on the spool, so I actually judged that pretty closely. I'm quite happy with that. So I think the next thing to do is get a trace on, get a lure on, and get figuring out a new piece of kit. So I've decided to kick off on this jerkster, not necessarily because I think it's the right thing to do, because to be honest I don't think it is, but because that's kind of what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll give, I'll give the jerk bait in half an hour, 40 minutes or so, and uh, if it's not working out then we'll start looking at plan B's, but for the moment I just want to whip some jerk baits around, I think it'll be fun. Okay, so first check in with the new reel and first impressions are absolutely brilliant. It is so smooth, it is so quiet, it's really easy to cast. Keep in mind that I'm using this without changing any of the settings. I haven't opened up that plate there where I can get into the magnetic braking system. I've done nothing with it, I've taken it out of the box, I spooled it up and I've started casting it. I was cranking that jerk bait pretty hard and it kept up with it, so I'm going to have to go with another jerk bait. Now, don't tell IB, but that bad boy there is one of her freestylers and the first time she'll know about it is when this goes live. Sorry Abby, gotta happen. Fish, there we go. There we go, first cast with the freestyler. Might be a good fish as well, let's just dial that drag down a little bit. First cast on that freestyler, they love that thing. Uh, that's only Jack. Just a little one. We'll get him in the net. Come on, buddy. There we go. That'll do us. So I've popped the hooks out already. I'll just give him a very quick lift. No monster. Nice start, though. Only a jack. Looks like they've been spawning from the amount of marks. A little bit ragged, but we'll take those first up. Cheers, IB. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Let's get you back. I know, I know, I know. Just that. <laughs> He's in a rush. Sweet. Well, that's a nice start. It's the first fish on the new reel. Always nice to get the first fish on a new piece of kit out of the way. It's also a fish on one of IB's baits and I have a feeling she's not going to be happy about this but that's not going to stop me <laughs> casting it. I'm going to keep chucking this and every time I catch a fish on one of IB's baits today I'm going to have to buy her a glass of wine. I think that's a fair deal. She'll take that. Okay, so I've made the first kind of big move of the day. I was follow the rod right on that bank over there. And I've come right the way around the whole bay. The reason for that is once it got into that bay, it was very still down there. That's at the back of the wind, that bay. I've just got this thing about fishing for pike in disturbed water, in riffled water. There could be nothing to it, but I feel like I catch more pike when the water's a little bit roughed up like this. I'm working around, I'm going back on that jerkster because there's quite a steep shelf here. It drops off pretty quick into quite deep water, so I just want a jerk bait that can fish a little bit lower down. Fish, there we go. There's a fish. That's a good one as well. Yeah, nice fish. Jeez, that took some working. Ooh. One on the jerks to finally. In you come, buddy. Oh, big gob full of jerk bait. 
There we go. There we go. Well, it took a little while to get fish number two on the board, but absolutely choked that jerk's just a little bit bigger than the last one. I've just measured it. 77 centimetres, so not huge, but an upgrade on the first fish and another one on the jerk bait. So actually, it's all kind of turning out how we planned. Sweet. There we go. Soaking off. Well, fish number two, and definitely an upgrade on the first one. Uh, absolutely choked that jerkster, that was a long way down. Uh, I got him unhooked before I did any of the release. That's exactly what I thought would happen here. I thought I might find a couple of fish. It, the bottom's quite uneven, it's, it's good hunting ground for them at this point. Uh, and with that rippled water being easier for them to hunt in as well, I think all in all it's probably the right place to have a look for a few more fish. So I'm going to stick around here for a while. I think it's huge. Jeez, I like that jerkster. I don't think it's a big fish. It's coming in pretty easily so far. Where's that net? Ooh, it only just hooked. It only just hooked. <laughs> Right, hooks out in the net. Only a little guy. Still, good sport on the jerk baits. Really enjoying this. I think there's still time for some more as well. Go on, buddy. There he goes. Well, this is starting to work out okay, isn't it? I mean, I'm not going to break any records with the fish I'm catching, but geez, I'm pleased to be catching a few. I use the old jerksers, but the new patterns I haven't touched at all, so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start experimenting with the colours a little bit. This might be a good time, actually, about halfway through the day, to uh, just have a few words about the new reel, that Citrix. So far, it's been absolutely flawless. I've backlashed once, and that was on the smallest bait, the lightest bait, into the breeze. So I think I can let it go a little bit there. For everything else, it's dealt with it really well. It's insanely smooth. Uh, it's just the right speed for this jerk baiting as well. I don't want it to be too fast that I'm affecting the bait by, by winding the reel. But at the same time, I don't want it to be too slow that I'm not able to keep up with the, with the bait as it's coming towards me. I think it's doing that really well. As yet, can't really fault it. So I'm going to keep fishing, I'm going to keep casting, and I'm going to see if I can find a couple of fish that might be slightly bigger. So, in the interest of experimenting, I've actually changed the colour of the jerkster. I've gone for this kind of orangey colour. I've also changed the weighting slightly. I had just the two steel balls in the roach pattern. I've actually put two steel balls with a glass one in between, just to see if the change in um, sound makes any difference. I wouldn't have thought it'd make a huge amount of difference, but I'm always curious to see if stuff like that actually works. That's more like it, a little bit of chop on the water. That's what they want, I'm sure of it. Let's thrash this jerk bait around here, see what we can draw up. Man, it's Toasty warming's cough. Oh, what a day it's turned out to be. Uh, sorry if the end in there is a bit abrupt. The last GoPro battery, the stick camera battery, and the power bank all died at pretty much exactly the same time, which I took as a signal that it was probably time to finish the day anyway. I guess there's two things really need to talk about at the end here. First off, that bad boy 
has served me very, very well today. I mean, that Jerkster's a alert I've talked about before in other vlogs. It's the first time I've had a chance to go out and test some of the new colours, and that thing they really, really liked. Be nice to get some tooth marks in there already. See the back treble there is bent out because I caught it on a snag and felt very, very lucky to get it back. So yeah, th these are gonna go really, really well. The new colors are absolutely beautiful. Links in the description. If you wanna get yourself some jerksters, there'll be some links to where you can buy them. And the other bit I need to talk about, the important bit, is this bad boy, the Citrix 364, which has been absolutely brilliant, absolutely faultless. I mean, I can think of perhaps two or three times all day when I've backlashed it. Bearing in mind that I've not opened up the side plate, I've not made any adjustments, I've not adjusted the magnets, I've literally taken it out of the box, spooled it up and started fishing with it. And it's an absolute testament to the reel that that is as much as you need to do to actually get a good day's fishing out of it. I said earlier I don't want to turn this into a techie review and I'm going to stick by that. I'm not going to go through the full specs of the reel and the reason for that is I want to use it a little bit more, get a bit more of a feel for it. After three or four uses, if you guys want to, then let me know and I'll do a full review, let you know what I think of the Citrix. Just did a very, very quick search on the internet and seen you can pick these up for sub 200 quid, which for a pike-sized reel with all the features that it's got, I think is pretty good money. Don't get me wrong, it's not cheap, it's a real investment, but if you're in the market for an upgrade on a baitcaster like I was, then I would be looking somewhere in that direction because that is a very, very...